Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbi Alameen. Ashadu Allah. Illaha illallah. Ashadu an Muhammad. Adiku wa Rasul. Surah. I seek refuge in Allah from the rejected enemy, Shaitan. With Allah's name, the most merciful benefactor, the most merciful redeemer. All praise is due to Allah alone. We praise him and we seek help from him. I bear witness there is no deity except Allah and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to whom the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, is his messenger. To mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran to mankind as part of keeping his promise to mankind. And we didn't really know of the promise until he revealed it in Quran that that he himself put that on himself, <coughs> that um, he will guide mankind. In Surah to Altin, where he says that uh, uh, man, he created man, Kalakana, Insana, Fil Ah, Sani Taqwin. He created man, and uh, it wasn't perfect. The word is not perfect, but the word is more like excellent. Some say the word asan, they say it's more like beautiful, but it's more like excellent. And the reason he's letting us know that man is excellent in his creation is because he's talking about Comparative. See, excellence is a comparison. It's compared to something else. If it's by itself, it's not excellent or inferior. It's neither. If it's by itself. But when Allah put that term excellent on it, that means He's comparing it to something. He is comparing Kalaka and Sam. He's comparing man to not just something else, but He's talking about the whole creation. The whole creation. Man is even more excellent than the angels. Why? Because the angels are not tested. The angels are not tested. How are you going to prove the excellence of an angel? When Allah told the angels he was going to create a caliph in the earth and told, him what, they told them what the caliph was, the angels, the Malaika, they said, that, uh, why would you create something like that that's going to cause bloodshed and misery when we obey you without any, any thought? Without any thought. They don't even think on their own. Angels don't think on their own. They don't say, well, well maybe I would obey Allah this time and maybe not. Maybe Allah doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe he does. Maybe I just take my time doing this. That's not even in the angel's vocabulary, angel's thought. He has no choice. They have no choice. The angel was created to obey Allah without any question, any, any thought pattern at all. So where is he tested? Allah says to prove excellence, you have to be tested. <coughs> How can you be excellent if you're not tested? So he uses this term with man, Asani Taqwin. He uses it with man because man is tested. Allah says over and over in Quran, He will test us. Life is a test. What is it? What is this? What is this? Do you know temptation come by you? Somebody offer you a lot of money or something, or a, a woman that's that, that, that's not just a good looking woman, but the kind of woman you dream of. That one. 
that it's in your mind. That that woman that's in your mind, or man that's in the woman's mind, that that's, that one come to you, propositioning you, and she may be somebody else's wife. Now, what are you gonna do? Your emotions come into play. Your emotions come into play. Your emotions come into play, and then you have to say, well. I'm either going to follow my emotions that I got the best thing that I could ever dream of here. I'll be in my heaven for at least 25 minutes or maybe 10, whatever it is. I'll be in my heaven. But I have a choice. I have a choice to either follow my instinct, follow my urges. <clears throat> and Allah gave me these urges. Now, this is, this is the test. Allah gave you the urges, gave you the instinct to to have temptation. Then he turned around and said, resist temptation. Now what are we going to do? We're going to either follow our urge or we're going to obey Allah's command. See, when you say to that woman, that, or whatever it is, that pile of money, or whatever it could be, just a cigarette, be anything. When you say lie, you are following your Lord. Now that, that addresses your excellence. That means you was able to overcome your urge as proof of your excellence. You can't overcome your urge. <laughs> You're not in that excellent category. And the only reason we won't be in that excellent category is because we are not following Allah's word. So Allah says he's given us his word, his guidance. He's given us the Quran. He's given us the, the Quran, the book, as guidance. So each and every one of us have the opportunity to rise to that excellence that he created us to be. He created each and every one of us to rise to that excellence. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exemplified that. Now, he wasn't the only one, but he exemplified. In fact, Ibrahim, according to what Allah says in the Quran, Ibrahim, Ibrahim and his followers had that uswa. The term uswa, Allah used in the Quran for excellent conduct, great conduct, the best conduct. He used it in identifying Prophet Muhammad. He also used it identifying Ibrahim and his followers. Uswa. So there's others who were tested. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was tested. Now he didn't know he was a prophet. <coughs> In fact, the tendency of a person to become uh, arrogant lie in the the person's believing that he's actually better or more worthy of something than others without any just cause. Now the prophet, he, he didn't even realize he was the prophet. He didn't realize he was the prophet. He didn't realize he was the message of Allah. He didn't realize any of that. Even after he received revelation. After he received the revelation, he didn't come out of the cave and say, I'm, I'm the man. No, he didn't say that. In fact, he humbled, he humbled himself so, he was so humbled by that experience. And we talk about an experience. Now, you, you, you just imagine this now. We're talking about an experience that something happened that shatters you, that breaks down all the kind of thinking you have. You're going along in life, and here, here's something happens that happens that just takes you out of the the spectrum. Now this happens a, happened a lot during man's growth period because this is the way Allah revealed messages to man. See, when we say Malaika brings, that's all it, that's all some angels do is bring the message from Allah. Now, <clears throat> now that's like a, that's not like a person walking here and say, oh, okay, I'm from Allah, I'm bringing y'all a message. It's not like that. It doesn't even happen like that. The, the, it's, it's so unique in the way it happens is that the only person that sees and hears this as a message from Allah is the messenger. 
even though there's others present. There's a hadith where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the followers were sitting in the, in the tent. And this man came in and they knew him. They knew him of, from another area. He was just, he was clean as if he wasn't even traveling. Had no dust on him. He came over to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and kneeled, kneeled down to him and put his knees against his, the Prophet's knees and put his hand on his leg and said, uh, <coughs> tell us, <coughs> what is religion? And the Prophet answered. Then he asked him several other questions. And the Prophet answered, tell us what the, what the, day, the day of judgment is coming. The Prophet said, well, the question is no better than the, the one who asked the question. And then when the man got up and left, the prophet asked him, he said, do you know who that was? Asked the question to the, to the people who was in the room. <coughs> do you know who that was? Oh, just another person for their concern. He said, that was Jabril. Jabril, he came to teach you your religion. You see how that, how that, how that, how that message from Allah works? Everybody else didn't even see it. But the prophet knew he had even received it before, so he knew what was going on now. But this, the first time that happened to him, when he was in the cave, just meditating, and suddenly this thing comes out of nowhere, out of darkness, and so real, as if he could touch it, as he could feel it. It took him over, just possessed him, and said, speak! That's a trying experience. When you really think about what this is and how it happens and how Allah reveals his message to man, you really see the impact of this. So what we call the people that Allah inspires to bring a message to man, we call, they really ain't people. They're Melaika, they're angels. They're Jabril is the ones put, put specifically that brings messages. That's the name that Allah gives that force. Allah gives that force a name. The force that comes from his command. From his command to man's ear, to man's heart. That force is to be. And when it came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was heavy. It was just heavy. That's why when he went home to his wife, he rushed in the house, fell on the floor, and say, oh, cover me up. Something, he just couldn't even, he couldn't even express the ex experience. And then finally, when he would gain some rational footing, they went to see a relative who was a religious man. He read scripture, he knew about scripture and all those things. He was a uh, studying and after prophet muhammad explained his experience to him he said well you're you're a prophet from what you tell me what you're telling me all i've read these men who have that kind of experience are prophets of god their prophets are messages of god you are a <clears throat> messenger you are a he had to tell prophet muhammad that the prophet didn't just come out the cave and say, oh, oh, I got some news for all y'all. I'm the messenger. I'm the prophet. That didn't happen like that. No, he was stunned. He was knocked off his feet. This was heavy. Coming from Allah, the creator of all the creation of the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that exists, <coughs> sent him a message for humanity. That's some heavy stuff. That's like the Creation. You, you ever hear the, the concept of how some of the scientists talk about the, the, the world coming into the world and the, the universe is coming into, they say just an explosion, the Big Bang. This is heavier than that. This is heavier than that. Because this was coming to the thing that Allah created in this creation to challenge the creation. See, this creation is not just here. This creation is being challenged every day by what? By your intellect. He said, Kalaka insane. He created the challenge for the creation to change the, the creation to what it wanted. 
insane, the thinking man. And then he let the angels know. He said, this is a Khalifa I'm creating. Khalifa meaning one who don't have to accept anything you say. One who don't have to believe anything that's talked about. One who makes his own decision about what he want to do. And he has the power to do it. He has the power for me to do it. This is what Allah is saying. So now that, getting this message, getting this message from Allah, is some powerful stuff. It's powerful. See, a lot of us walk around with the Quran, read the Quran, and we don't know what we have in our hands. If the Quran was a, a chemical experience, it would blow up half this country. If the Quran, you, you, you hear, uh, you hear in the Quran, it say if this was put on the mountain and split it in half, split it asunder, that's how powerful this is. If this was, if this Quran was dropped on the mountain and just shattered the mountain. We walk around with it and don't know the power of it. We just think it's some kind of ritual we're supposed to do, read it and, and pray and things of that nature. No, this has the power to change. This has the power to change everything. This Quran has the power to change. Look at the beauty of this. Allah says that man, unlike the angels, is an individual. Each and every one of us. Not just Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not just Ibrahim, each and every one of us is an individual, right down to our fingerprint. Which means we have an individual expression. We can express this whole creation without anybody telling us how to express it. And we don't have to listen to nobody. We don't have to obey nobody. We don't have to do what they say do, how we should see things. No, we have the power to express our own individual character, our own individual nature, our own individual thoughts. Malaika has not that power. We have that power. The human being has that power. Certainly we are not independent because independence is a different meaning. Independent means you stand alone, you don't need anything. We know we're not independent because we need our legs, we need our heads, we need stuff we didn't even create. So we're not independent. But we are an individual. Which means that which created us, created us to think for ourselves. Independently of each other. And he did that without having any fear of repercussion. That's why the angels can understand that. The angels wait a minute. <laughs> what you have made here, Allah, you have made a creature that don't even have to listen to you. And then you give him the power to go in the earth and bring things out and just blow things up if he wants to. Uh, what, what is this, Allah? Allah says to them, I know what you know now. You see, Allah knew what he created. This is why each and every human being should be walking this planet with confidence. Confidence in that this, this whole situation that you see going on in this world is going to come out right. It's going to come out right because Allah had made it to come out right. We know it's kind of hard to accept that when you see all this stuff going on. And people shooting down folks in the street. But really, things are getting better. We just don't see it. I remember when we was trying to establish Islam in America, and all they would talk about a black Muslim, because they thought that's what we was talking about. This was about years ago, 1935, 19, when I was born in 1942, 1950s, 1960s. That's what they're talking about. Black Muslims. Black Muslims. So it looked like it was going to get wiped out. The FBI infiltrated, tried to wipe out it, because then at that time it was called the Nation of Islam, but they didn't see it coming. They thought they was looking at a, a movement that was a nationalistic movement. This is where they, they approached it. They approached it as if we was a nationalistic movement. And we thought we were a nationalistic movement. Because this is the way the Honorable Elijah Muhammad established it, as a nationalistic movement 
that was establishing nationhood. And we believed in our blackness. We believed in our blackness so much so, we thought our blackness was superior to anything else. So, when the government came at us, they was coming at us from that position, but that wasn't Allah's prayer. See, hid in that whole aspect of this nationhood, hid in this whole aspect of this blackness, black and proud, black is beautiful, hid in all of that, was la ilaha illallah, Muhammad the Rasulullah. Hid in it. It was hidden in there. And when Imam Mufti Muhammad came into existence, the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he came in and started studying it, he saw the message. He saw the message that was in the Quran. He said, this is the message. And that changed the whole movement. But it was too late for the FBI then to stop it. It was too late for the, the outer society to stop it. It was on the move. We converted more Muslims under the uh, leadership of Imam Muhammad than any other group in the world. We were on the move. So Islam had a footing. We had started making salat. We had started making we had do, fasting. We started fasting during Ramadan. We were doing all of the things that comply with Islam. Islam was on the move. It made it easier for those who was coming out of the country, who were Muslim, to come into the country and establish themselves. Because they didn't have to come in and fight through their way through the door. We did that. With Allah's help. With Allah's help, we established Deen al Islam in the West. That's the power of this Quran. The power, no man came and told us that. We didn't even receive a Malaika. Jibreel didn't come. Nothing except this Quran and faith in Allah. That's how powerful this book is. When you look at Islam in America, everybody should be saying, Allahu Akbar. Because it was Allah who established it. We didn't do it. Only Allah has that power. And he did it through the Quran. That's just to show and emphasize the power of this Quran. That's why those of us who came through that experience should love the Quran. We should love the Quran more than any book that ever been published. We should be now, I'm not saying, don't love your mother and father. <laughs> don't. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that. So somebody will walk out here and say, don't. Go there and tell us to love our mother and father. Okay? But we should love it more than anything on the planet. This Quran. This Quran, not only is Mubin, not only is it is, is clear, it's, it's, it's a savior for us. It's a God. Allah said, it's a God. Who that? Who that? If we have faith in Allah and believe in Allah, then we got to believe this Quran is a Huda. What would he tell us is a Huda for if it's not? You give us a book and say it's Huda, and we say, oh, well, no, we got to get something else. You got to give us another, you got to give us another prophet, or you got to give us another messenger or somebody. You got to give us, no, no, he said, this is Huda. This Kitab, this Kitab is who your God, this Kitab here. If you have anything, if you have any belief at all, you don't have to be a believer, but you just have, you just have to have that fear in you that you think there's God. You know things are not as bad as they look, that, 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 that sincerity, that, that uh, as uh, the Quran put it, that taqween. That's what it's for. Powerful book. Powerful book, we should pay close attention to it as a guy. So with that, we want to take a short part. I was the Bala Mini Shaykh Hani Mazeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbi al-Rahim. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashadu Allah Muhammad al-Rahim al-Rahim. Okay, now we just want to look at why that's so important, briefly, and and what how we how we control this, how we control it, how we get in control. There's a, a hadith. Prophet Muhammad talks about um, 
He talks about um, anger. He talks about anger in, in words that um, you, you can't get angry. Um, he says, some are swift to anger and swift to cool down. The character, the characteristic making up for the other, some are slow to anger and slow to cool down. Characteristic making up for the other. But the best of you is he who are those who are slow to anger and swift to cool down. And the worst are those who are swift to anger and slow to cool down. Now, looking at that briefly, what is that talking about in terms of man's control? You know, you hear many talks about how the devil, Satan, can get you out of the, your human character, that kind of talk. Well, the devil you have to be more afraid of is the one that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is talking about. Anybody who is swift to anger, slow to cool down, you got a real problem. You got to work on that. You got to work on patience. You got, you got to work with yourself because that is the devil's hunting ground. That's Shaitan's hunting ground. Because to get angry, you know when you get angry with somebody, you know what the scientists say? They say in order for you to get angry with somebody, you got to think you're better than they are. When you, when you, you think you're superior. That's what causes the anger. You think you're superior. And that, that, that's the beginning of arrogance. And arrogance, of course, you know, is the one thing that caused the jinn to be identified as shaitan. Because the arrogant jinn say, I'm better than he. I'm better than the part you created over there. This part that, uh, that you created in me is better than that. That's arrogance. Listen to the language. Now, Allah says this. In order for you to survive and to overcome any of those urges that can destroy you, you have to exercise obedience. Obedience to the Quran. Obedience to his language. Obedience to his word. You can't get outside of that. It's, I know we say, well, can I do it on my own? Okay, you can, take, you can try that if you want to. You can try it if you want to, but most times, they end up on the short end of the stick. Because it's just hard to get around some of the things. Because a lot reveals stuff to you that you don't know is happening. And when you read the Quran and you read these examples and you read all these kinds of things that's going on, you get a whole different impression. Look, there's some in the Quran who follow their own impression. You take this, the, 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 um, uh, uh, um, the story of, of, of uh, Lot. The story of Lot talks about a city whereas they were following their own impression. They got so much so into it that when the angels came to, to actually save them if they had been obedient, they wanted to attack them. They wanted to take advantage of them. And then Lot said, take my daughters. Don't, don't bother these men. So you know a whole lot of things are going on. That's what the suggestion is there. But really what it's talking about is following, following your worst urges. And so Allah just destroyed it. Bam! Straight. Can't go into the future. That philosophy, that culture that, that's so deep into its thinking, that thinking cannot come into the future. That's what Allah is saying. That thinking that, that, that was in that city cannot come into the future. Then you look down in the Quran a little further, you find there's another city, another town. Down by the water. Raising all kinds of cane, making all kinds of mischief and stuff going on. And the prophet come to them, Jonah, come to them. Say, look, I, I didn't want to come here in the first place. I did everything I could to get out of this job. Now why don't y'all just straighten up? Just straighten up and, and just get yourself together, follow Allah's word, and, and it'd be good. And do good deeds. That's all it takes. Just do some righteous deeds. Just, if you don't do it for yourself, do it for me, because I'm not coming back anymore. 
This is what Jonah, this is what he felt about the whole thing. And what happened? They said, oh, you know what? You sound like you're talking some good business here. I, I tell you what, we're going to follow what you're talking about. And the city was bad. They followed what he was talking about. He was raising all kind of Cain too, but when they followed what the messenger came with, they were spared. So Allah is showing us two things here. You go on out there and live if you want to, but if you stay with his word, you follow his guidance, you will be all right. That's what all those signs and things are for in the Golden Head, to help us, to help us see clear. So each one of us, each one of us has to see this clear. You can't, you can't see it. My wife can't see it for me. I can't see it for her. Your, 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 your parents can't see it for you. Your children can't see it for you. you can't, none of that. Your friend can't see it for you. You have to see it clear in your own mind because Allah created you to be able to do that. The moment you say, I am confused, that means you're saying Allah did not create you to do that. Then you're saying Allah is not God. Then you're saying Allah is not the color. You're saying he's not the creator. You're saying he doesn't know what he's doing when he brought you here. No, you have to stand up on it. You have to stand up and say, Allah is God. And Allah knew what he was doing when he created me. I'm going to follow his word no matter what goes on. I don't care what my mother does. I don't care what my father does. I don't care what my wife does, my children. I'm following Allah's word. That's how powerful that is. So we thank Almighty God, Allah, for blessing us to be here this day. We ask Allah to bless all of those who were able to make it and intended to make it. We ask Allah to bless all the good people of the planet and show us the way. And we ask Allah to give us the best of this world and of the hereafter and protect us from the fire. Amen. He commented so much.